This is the Amazon, one of the most untamed places on our planet. I recreated a miniature version of the Amazon. Rivers, rainforest, and some of the most fascinating species. Can an ant colony rise when I simulate real life events? No way. And what will happen when I try to recreate one of the world's wildest rivers inside a tank? This is the Amazon rainforest. Well, no it's not. This is actually the UK, one of the least tropical places on Earth. But I'm trying to recreate the Amazon rainforest using just two tanks. One is for the land, and one is for the water. Water. Anyway, this video is in collaboration with Vance HQ. Ants HQ have sent me the ants, the supplies, and everything I'll need to build the foundation for a mini ecosystem. We started building a rainforest, with a drainage layer at the bottom and into the soil above, so the ants can dig tunnels and build their own nest. To make the tank look like a forest floor, and to make it look natural, I added some rocks, leaves, and sticks. The ants in these two tubes are not your typical garden ants. They're huge. They have powerful jaws that can snap 2,300 times faster than you can blink. Every ant colony has a queen, but in this colony, we have more than one. There's at least two queens, and the rest of the ants are the queen's workers. Here they come. Some of the worker ants set out to explore, while others stay to guard the queen. I left the ants alone until the next day, but when I came back, both nests were completely empty. But after a few days, they return, and I can see the worker ants moving tiny stones and carrying around soil. No way. They're all doing it. The ants are actually building their own home, like a miniature construction site, except it's underground. In a natural setup like this, the ants can dig down into the soil where it's dark and moist. It's also a place for them that's safe. After a few weeks, I checked under the wood to see what progress they've made. The Amazon River is filled with some of the most interesting fish species. Some that are peaceful, and some that like to claim a territory for themselves. Inside this tank, I want to build them all a natural habitat. I poured in the substrate, and then placed in rocks and wood, like they'd fallen naturally into the river over time. Then I added plants, and I thought the river was complete. But in the Amazon, the story doesn't stop at the water's surface. Over the next few months, the tank had some algae issues, but nothing that couldn't be fixed. Shrimps and snails are some of wildlife's natural cleanup crews, and in the aquarium, they do the same thing. The shrimps can dig into the toughest algae, even the spots you can't reach, like some of the delicate leaves you'd normally have to cut off. And the snails handle all the waste from the ground all the way up into the tree roots below the surface. These are the peaceful fish of the Amazon, the ones that show together and stay constantly on alert for predators. They're some of the most interesting fish in the Amazon. They have speed, their scales shimmer in the light, and some of the smallest but most colourful fish you can find. But what happens when territorial fish show up?
whilst the river settles. Let's have a look at life above the surface. Foraging never stops in the rainforest. Long before the ants see food, they can already sense the jelly through their antennas. The ants can communicate with each other using chemical signals. The ants' body is built for life in a forest. Fine hairs across their bodies help ants sense food, danger, and even changes in their environment through vibrations. The ants began breaking away pieces of the jelly, not for themselves, but to carry back to the nest. The jelly acts as a water source, just like nectar in the wild. The ants store it whenever they can, preparing for what's ahead. This is an epistogramma, a territorial fish. At first, the male looks dull as he settles in, but over time, they form partnerships and claim small caves as their own. But this river isn't just owned by one species. Some fish stay near the surface, others disappear into the plants. When the season changes, the leaves fall. Put them there and there. And then the rain begins. Each drop begins to reshape the forest floor and each creature must adapt. The ants have sensed the rainfall and began moving underground. The rain helps the forest to feed the river. When the rain is over, a whole different Amazon wakes up. Out here, everything is either hunting or being hunted. But the real question is, how does anything survive? Rainforest leaves feed these tiny creatures called Daphnia. But they're small, fragile, and they're constantly being hunted. Meanwhile on the land, the rain has cleared up and the ants have re-emerged. And so have some insects. And the queen must be protected from anything that could break into the nest. There's too many flies. With food at stake and the queen potentially in danger, the worker ants split up to defend. Queen, look, look how close it is. Got it. That's one fly down. But the worker ants are relentless and they started getting them one at a time. Prey like this dubia roach are not easy to catch. But the ants are hungry and every move counts. Each and every meal secures the future of the colony. Hunting like this was a team effort. The dubia roach becomes outnumbered. The ants use their powerful jaws and deadly sting to take down a creature bigger than themselves. The ants carry the food down into the nest, enough to last the colony for days.
The ants have faced everything in their path over the months. The trap jaws are so powerful they can even launch themselves when snapping at prey. But what is it all for? Well, I finally caught it on camera. Worker ants are carrying large clusters of eggs, which means the queen is thriving and the worker ants have done their job. Mission accomplished. In the river, a community of fish have now found a way to live peacefully together. <laughs>